I am your host, Evans Zeninga. Young voters are looking to the United States as a model for improving their own country's electoral process with the elections two weeks away. Many Zimbabwean youths have identified several positives in the American system that they believe could benefit their own country. Some of the positives they are highlighting include the peaceful transfer of power, transparency, inclusivity, implementing efficient voter registration process to increase citizen participation and ensuring media freedom to provide unbiased coverage of elections. That is why we are going to talk about Wanoti Zimbabwe da ya kwani sa kubvunz kubvumizao shizwaro shayo shiri kunzekwe nyika kuvota sejnoi tu kama mo America. Nchini sasa sasa na basi wote sasa sasa kwa America si nata sasa tatu kwa na wata wata sasa tu kama wewe Zimbabwe ni America wakamila sisi sio hiyo tu kama wacha au na kujana sisi 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 Chaura sala sala na kwa pamoja kwa bato yili parukanza kuchala na u wasi na bato la wakariri kia sisi zaidi na kwa nisa o kuzunza kuno kuzima bwe tu kuziza uti maguko kwa 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 Awa ndiwa luku chitike mungari wemo harare wechidiki wangewe chitaura na Tobias Tobias Mudzingwa we Studio 7. Tobias abato mungwe mungari wemo harare muzare rumbi zai mpofu. Tinzu wakuti wano tikudi vachiti Zimbabwe inyika ya kazi miririra. Istina zaka wanda zeku dziza kubamu saruzo zeku Amerika. Ayo waka isusu we are Zimbabwe. America is America. Whatever is network from America, America is governed by government yao. Isusu we have got our own government. So whatever they call kuti is, is democratic kwavari, it might not be democratic here. Whatever chatu kuti is democracy in Zimbabwe, iko kwa it can never be uyu uyu. Saka what I say is, even gavaita zhavo, we can't copy zina zavo zina elections. Even they can't copy on zina zavo zina elections. Because America ya gareno zuona hongi nika ili democratic. Nika inema elections as are free from violence. But you find that there was a time, Trump jaya yaka shoot kwa nziri, achita ma campaigns. But if you look at Zimbabwe, we don't even have a time. It's not about the presidential election or parliamentary election. Yekuti we can take not kuti nyingi. The president was shot. Nyingi was shot. So whatever, Shavaru kuita ikoko, we can't adopt that. Isusu, we are Zimbabweans, we are free, and it's not of our era, whatever, so it's not a democracy, it's not a democracy, and there is no any time, yet it's a copa, because they are saying that America is democratic. Isusu, we are proud of we are proud of that, and we will never adopt it, and we will never copy it, because this is Zimbabwe. 
Musare rumbi zai mpofu wavo vari kwa kare kwa harare vachitaurao pa msoro pezinya ya ze saruzo ze kuno kwa Amerika izi. And now to discuss this we are joined by programs manager for project Vote 263 Zimbabwe Mr. Obrail Tafadzwa Mavunga. We also have George Washington University postgraduate law student Mrs. Chenai Muspera Kuyenda. Mrs. Chenai Muspera Kuyenda is a past Mandela Washington fellow. So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. Thank you. Sure. Aha. Uh -huh. sure. Thank you for having us. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Let me start with you, Mr. Mavunga. You are in the election business full time. What do you bring to the election table as an organization? Let's start from there. Oh, okay, uh, I work with uh, Project Vote 263, and I work with Project Vote 263, you know, mobilizing young people, conducting civic education, and just doing work around elections, during elections, and now we're also engaged in the work post election so that we can create an active voter base for, for young people in the bubble. Mm -hmm. Now that we understand where you're coming from, we know exactly what to throw at your hands. Let me move on to Ms. Uh, Muskera Kuenda. The things I know about you, law background, and now you have the privilege of understanding both worlds, both, both worlds, the Zimbabwe system, the USA system. What comes to your mind once we start looking at the U.S. elections? Thank you. Um, personally... I am actually an apathetic citizen. Unfortunately, I've never participated in any election processes. Well, because of one reason or another, it's either I'm not in the country, my country, Zimbabwe, which I love very much, and obviously I, I cannot vote in America right now. But what I think of when I think of the U.S. elections, are they democratic? Who knows? People are campaigning, people are talking about whatever they want to implement. But for me, it's always post-campaigning, post-elections, Whoever gets into power, are they actually going to meet or do what they say they're going to do, right? What they promise their citizens. It's all talk, talk. It's a polit politics to me is just a business. That's how I feel. And each country has its own way of um, approaching their elections and approaching their systems and how they implement those systems. So that is what I think. Mm -hmm. Quite a mouthful there you've just dropped. Let's move back to Mr. Mavunga. Any lessons learned so far on the build-up to the U.S. election? Uh, uh, quite a lot. I think I think the United States uh, still is a, is a beacon of democracy and how we can actually implement some of the things that we are seeing there in America. Uh, I, I think I think if we look at how the the, the two main candidates are campaigning, it's something that we, we should actually implement here. In Zimbabwe, in the previous month, I think in September, I saw uh, statistics showing that the opposition candidate, in this case, the former president Donald Trump, uh, had more rallies than the vice president of of the ruling party, uh, Ms. Kamala Harris, which is something that shows that 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 democracy is mature. And if we are to relate it back home in Zimbabwe, you, you will recall that in the, the last election, the 2023 elections, uh, opposition rallies were being banned. So if going forward, if we can try to copy uh, such such good things from the United States, I think we can have a better democracy and a better way of selecting uh, candidates that would want to represent us, even in the, in the parliament or in the local councils. So I think we need to have that freedom, uh, freedom of campaign, freedom of expression from 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 the uh, political parties, and also looking at the, the freedom of the media. I think there are, there are media houses that are leaning to the left, and there are also media houses that are leaning to the right. And you can actually see that there is a balance of both. You have access to information that you want, which is good. But here in Zimbabwe, traditional media is always leaning towards one side, and, and there is also the lack of exposure. For other candidates in Zimbabwe, we usually have maybe like over 15 presidential candidates, but there is only coverage for about two, if not three. 
So we also need to have uh, that coverage of all the candidates uh, that will be in the, in the election. So those are some of the things that we're also seeing. And looking at the, the, the side that I'm coming in from, at the youth perspective, so we, we are seeing a steady increase of, of, of the, the, the young people who are participating in the election. I think since the 2018 10 there has been a steady increase. And that is something that we as people who are working towards the inclusion of young people in, in, in elections and electoral processes, we, we can see that we, we have uh, a long way to go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, let me move back to you, Mrs. Ms. Muskera Kuyenda. Now, I, I, I picked up quite an interesting uh, phrase in, in what you said earlier. Elections are just talk, 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 talk. That means there must be a lot, volumes of promises, volumes of subjects that are being discussed and talked about. What are the key issues you would say are on the table for young people as we go into this election? Okay, perfect. Um, you know, for the young people, let's, let's speak of things like in Zimbabwe, just the high unemployment rate. Young people want to hear about jobs. We want to hear how the um, you know industries are going to be um, resuscitated. We want to hear about how we can actually have a hope to graduate and apply for a job and get a job, right? That's what young people want to hear. If not that, they talk of indigenization and entrepreneurship. But where's the capital? Where are we getting the finance? Where are we learning the skills to become entrepreneurs? Like, you know, back in, in, in Zimbabwe, it's, it's agriculture, it's, it's mining, right? Who is actually teaching me those skills where I can actually afford? Because if I'm not going to work and I'm going to start a business, where am I getting those skills at least for free? Or at least even like on a payment plan, maybe even on a loan, right? So you find that in the way people get loans. Some people say loans are not good, loans are, are not are great, and are, are bad. Some say they're good. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because it's, it's a step that allows you to get to where you want to go, what, what you want to become in life. You, so that is what the youth want to hear. Um, we hear a lot of, oh, the future is the, the future is youth. The youth are our future. But mm. in which platforms, where have, have we seen the youth actually being the ones on the podium, the ones actually talking, the ones actually stating what is happening, what they are going through, what they need? So we are being spoken of theoretically, but practically we are not nowhere in the space. Even if you look at um, organizations like the United Nations, you name them all. They will talk about education, the youth, the youth, the future is the youth. But when you look at it, who, which youth is representing, which young person is representing they, uh, when they have their, their um, conferences, they may invite some young brand ambassadors. Their young brand ambassadors speak. Mm. But if you listen to those young, young brand ambassadors, they'll tell you that we speak, we Tell them what we want, but we are not getting anything in return. Five years later, where's the budget? Where's the money? How, what are you allocating to us? Mm. So for us youth, it's all about the money. We want money. We need capital to build our future. That's it. Mm. Very, very interesting there. Maybe a follow-up question to that immediately before I, I, I move to Mr. Mavunga. If you look at uh, Zimbabwe's system, I hear you've mentioned the United Nations, you've mentioned other organizations that young people are not fully represented there. Do you think in Zimbabwe young people are equally not represented or are they represented, especially looking at positions of leadership, parliament, um, senate, council, whatever? What, what's your take on that? Okay, um, I mean with the new... Um you know, um, post-election, we, we, we saw new people, younger people, being um, um, leading, taking the forefront, right? We saw um, elections and nominated uh, and candidates being elected. They said they're young people. I'm not sure because I haven't really been following up on how they are now helping the other youth, right? But for me, just giving a personal perspective of just the people that I've been around and the people that I've met, the people that I've met here um, um, currently, you see that it's a lot of these young people, young families between their 30, 30 to 45, sometimes even as young as 25, right? 
Mm-hmm. They are just um, loitering, not just in the States, but anywhere in the world, people that I tried to. And everyone says, I didn't, I, I wasn't represented, nothing was working, I didn't have a hope, I wasn't interested in ABC. So you, we might think of what is actually publicized when we read the news, when we read the, uh, whatever, when we read our social media platforms, right? The information that's the, out there is makes it seem like, oh, there's actually representation, but in the reality of things, what percentage is that? I believe it's probably like 3%, but where's the 97% of the people who... So I wouldn't say people are equally represented. There is no place that you go on this earth where people are equally represented anyway. But what I can tell you is, um, in any case, the youth are all looking to leave um, those who are looking to remain is because maybe they've had some inheritance of, the, of some sort or they are the ones that are equally um, represented or they are those who really just do not have the means to leave or maybe just the last um, um, position would just be they, they, they have no hope and or they have hope that something will work out. Mm. So it's neither here nor there, potato, potato. It depends <laughs> from where you're coming from, your background, what you aspire to become, um, yes, because not everyone wants to be an entrepreneur, right? Some people just want a nine-to-five, but if you're going to get a nine-to-five that really pays you nothing, why why stay? You'd rather just look for other opportunities elsewhere where you can get a decent salary. People just want a decent way of living. Mm. You hear that, Mr. Mavunga, coming there from uh, Ms. Mskwera Kuyenda. Now, let me come back to you, Mr. Mavunga, and ask you this question. You said Zimbabwe can learn, can take a page, can take a leaf from the electoral process in the USA. Do you think the U.S. electoral system can also learn something from Zimbabwe's election process? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, first and foremost, I, I don't even fully understand the United States electoral system, how the electoral college works, and how is that democratic. Uh, I don't understand that. Mm-hmm. I, I think if we are to be serious, we need that one man, one vote uh, criteria to be implemented uh, across across board and I think that's one thing that the United States has to learn uh, probably. I, I have read uh, a different engagement with other people and they're saying it is functional in that perspective, it is functional in that uh, way it is, but I, I don't see how, how, how democratic in that is. Uh, looking at how other states get more electoral college votes that are uh, higher than the others, so it, it's something that I think they can also learn uh, from from the democracy that we have here in Zimbabwe. And uh, probably the other thing that, that that they must also take from 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 here in Zimbabwe uh, is um, the issue of uh, multi-party democracy. I, I think here in Zimbabwe we have quite a number of, of presidential candidates, quite a number of uh, candidates across all the the various elections that we have, which is a big difference in the United States. You only have two different political parties in the time you get one, but they always uh, don't get into the election line as uh, is, is, is a talking point. But here in Zimbabwe, you, you always find three or four, five or six uh, competing candidates. So I think that's, that's, that's a democracy that we want to see uh, multiple views, multiple views, where people don't just lean to the left or to the right, but there are also people who lean in between. So I think and those are some of the things that they can actually copy from, from, from here. Mm-hmm. We hear you there loud and clear. Coming back to you, Mr. Um, Swera Kuyenda, let me draw you to a few specific issues um, that have been driving the, the, the campaigns around as, they, as, as the parties, the Democratic Party and, and the Republican Party have been campaigning. There's been issues of immigration and abortion at play. Do you see those pulling votes in a certain way? Um, pardon, do I see those? Do you see these issues pulling votes in certain, in certain directions? Oh, yes, yes. Um, I believe so. Um, I mean, America is made up of immigrants anyway. Um, that's the, the, the majority of the population. And people, immigrants who are here just want probably, um, you know, um, legal paperwork, legal documentation. So obviously that will pull a lot of um, immigrants um, to vote. 
So you'll find that um, definitely Trump has been talking about, oh, immig- if, if people are saying if, if Trump gets into power, um, immigrants will probably lose their, you know, their future, what they were thinking of doing in the next five years, because they maybe have to return back to your country, or even just like um, employment issues and access to certain resources may may not be favorable to them. Um, on the other hand, Camila is talking about, um, as we have seen well during the reign, that um, Immigrants have really um, been in favor. I've even heard a few people talking about how short the process of getting a green card has been and all that. So definitely the issue of immigration and who is really giving, um, you know, favorable promises. I'll, I call them promises because until they are made, they are just promises, right? Who's giving favorable promises is the one who's probably going to attract a larger chunk of um, immigrants. Mm-hmm. And uh, for you, uh, Mr. Mavunga, your two specific issues, I-, I think these also have been uh, very evident in Zimbabwe. Issues to do with mental health of young people, issues to do with climate change at a global platform. Do you think they also have an impact on uh, how voters will choose who to vote for? Yeah, sure, definitely. I, I think uh, the, the issue of climate change uh, is it's more topical and critical in U.S. politics, more than it is a, a topic here in Zimbabwe. Uh, here in Zimbabwe, it's not something that you find on the top electoral issues, but it has severe impacts, like we've seen the, 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 the severe droughts we've been experiencing uh, due to electric rain for patterns. Uh, in the El Nino induced drought. But in the United States, it is something that is always on top of the, 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 the electoral issues. I mean, in 2020, we saw how President Biden campaigned on the, on the Green New Deal uh, uh, policy, where he was promising new green jobs and uh, transition to renewable energy while it's creating millions of jobs. It's something that is typical in the United States. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here in Zimbabwe, it's something that uh, is not that typical. And we also look at the, at the issue of the mental health. It's something that is also coming into play here in Zimbabwe, especially if we are looking at the issue of, of drug and drug abuse. It's something that is directly linked with, with, um, with mental health. And it's a growing concern amongst all the, the people in Zimbabwe, especially after the COVID-19. Many people lost their jobs and many people uh, uh, fell into drug and drug abuse. And the issue of mental health is something that is not talked about enough in Zimbabwe. So I, I do think that it can be a, a, a very, very big issue in the, in the upcoming elections. Mm-hmm. And even in the US, it's something that, that is actually uh, on top of, of of the election issues Those are uh, that, that can actually determine. Uh, Mr. Mavunga, you, you, you are a preacher in this ministry, but time is not on our side. Thank you so much, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for being on the show today. We appreciate you for coming, and we also thank our listeners and viewers back at home across the country. About 14 million voters are members of unions, workers' organizations formed to protect their rights. But even though union members make up a small part of the American electorate, presidential candidates eagerly seek their endorsement. VOA's congressional correspondent, Catherine Gibson reports from Nevada, where unions have a powerful voice in this year's presidential election. At a rally for Vice President Kamala Harris, excitement among union workers for her plan to end taxes on tips or gratuities that workers receive. I know that Vice President Kamala Harris has a plan, a clear plan to end federal taxes on tips for us service workers here in Nevada. That's right, that's right. And that Donald Trump pretending he is the tipped worker's savior is a dangerous lie. Former president and Republican candidate Donald Trump has also visited the city that relies on the service industry to promote his plan of no taxes on tips for casino dealers, waitresses, and housekeepers. 
That is going to be adored by the employees, by all of the employees, particularly that don't have salaries and that they work on tips. That's going to be loved by them. Trump has also earned the support of the Las Vegas Police Department. The majority of our citizens trust law enforcement. And so if law enforcement says, hey, we believe this person has our best interests at heart, that they're going to keep you safe, that they're going to try and make our economy thrive, uh, that people trust what we say. Gramas has spoken about Trump's support for law enforcement at numerous rallies. A man like Donald Trump and his campaign has always stood by us and said, no, I'm not going to bend to the um, winds of politics. The endorsement of the tens of thousands of union workers employed in Nevada is eagerly sought by presidential candidates. Harris also earned the endorsement of the local Teamsters Union. But the National Association of Freight Drivers and Warehouse Workers declined to endorse either presidential candidate. Some voters here in Nevada see that as an important sign. Well, they always, always went Democratic. So now if they're not doing Democratic, that means they must be leaning towards who? Trump. But the Culinary Workers Union in Las Vegas did endorse Harris. Working class voters are, are smart. They're not dumb and they, they are a little skeptical. But the problem with President Trump is that he lies and he lies a lot. However, Vice President Harris, this is part of an overall program to tackle the cost of living. And they're knocking on doors to let voters know. We're just coming to see for Kamala Harris. Okay. Okay. Well, we're all voting for her. Big corporations coming in and price gouging us on food, gas, you know, rent. Um, so having, you know, the right candidate in office, you know, telling them the correct information, what I know as facts, that, you know, Kamala's going to be there for us, the middle class, the union members. Union members here in Nevada, one of just a handful of swing states that decide the presidential election, could end up casting the deciding vote. Catherine Gibson in Las Vegas, Nevada, VOA News. We will bring you another show tomorrow. And signing off in Washington, I am Ivan Zeninga.